Good morning, church. I hope you've had a good weekend, and I hope that as our physical isolation drags on, that uh, you're doing what David did in 1 Samuel 30, and strengthening yourself in the Lord your God. I appreciate the email that the elders sent out on Thursday, and I want to add my recommendation to theirs on the weekday prayer time that they mentioned uh, that Daniel Henderson does on Facebook. Uh, I've been participating in that myself uh, as I've been able and have really enjoyed it. Uh, Daniel is a wonderful brother uh, with a huge heart for prayer. And of course, the Psalms are just so relevant to the struggles that we're going through right now. So uh, I encourage you to take advantage of those guided prayer times with Daniel uh, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. If you have access to Facebook. Today, as you probably know, is Palm Sunday. Uh, this begins the week of Jesus' suffering. So I want to ask you this morning to turn your attention to him. You know, the story of the cross never gets old, does it? One of the beautiful things about it is the richness of it, the depth of the cross. Uh, there are just so many facets of it. There are so many ways to look at it. 
there was so much that was accomplished in that historic moment. Uh, I think sometimes we tend to, uh, to take a very limited view of the cross and maybe just think of it as God's way of atoning for our sins. And obviously it did that, but it did far more than just that. Its purpose was much wider in scope. The scriptures tell us that the cross had cosmic significance. In fact, when you look at the cross in the context of the story of the Bible, what we're supposed to understand is that Jesus was actually fulfilling the promise that was made way back in the Garden of Eden, right after the fall in Genesis 3.15, the promise to crush Satan's head. The Apostle John says it this way in 1 John 3, 8, the Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. According to Hebrews 2, 14, through his death, Jesus robbed Satan of his power. But you also see this, this theme of Jesus' defeat of Satan in Psalm 110, verse 1. Uh, the text that is quoted in the New Testament more than any other Old Testament passage. There in that verse, David says, The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Now, the New Testament writers, of course, apply that to Jesus. In his death and resurrection, Jesus subjugated his enemies. Satan, the former ruler of this world, was cast out, John 12, 31. The Apostle Paul says it this way in Colossians 2, 15, through Jesus, God disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public display of them, having triumphed over them. And it's because of Jesus' victory over the evil cosmic powers that we are reconciled to God. To say it a different way, you and I are saved because Christ was victorious. And I think it's, it's helpful and important for us to keep our salvation in the context of that broader theme of Jesus' victory over Satan. But here's what I want to focus on just now, and, and it's related to what I just talked about. The cross, according to the New Testament, demonstrates the magnificent wisdom of God. You know, we often talk about how crafty and clever the devil is, and there's no question about that. But we also need to remember that Satan is no match for God's wisdom. In fact, Paul tells us that God actually defeated Satan by outsmarting him. Listen to Paul's words in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. Yet we speak wisdom among those who are mature, Paul says. A wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age that is, uh, Satan and his demons, the, ruler, uh, the wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood. Now notice this statement. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Satan had no idea what he was doing when he had Jesus killed. The devil and his minions did not grasp what God was planning to do by sending Jesus into this world. As you read through the gospel accounts, and in particular, uh, the confrontations that Jesus had with demons, it's very clear from what the demons say that they don't know why Jesus is here. We know that at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Satan uh, tried unsuccessfully to lure uh, Jesus into sin and those wilderness temptations that you remember. Failing in that, though, he evidently decided that, well, since the Son of God is human, he's vulnerable. 
So I'll just put him to death. John 13, 27 makes it very clear that it was Satan who incited Judas to betray Jesus into the hands of his enemies. This was the devil's doing. What Satan didn't realize was that he was playing right into God's hands. Jesus' death on the cross was part of God's plan, though it was the devil who carried it out. God apparently tricked Satan into thinking that he would be defeating God by killing Jesus, when in reality, he was signing his own death warrant. It was a brilliant military maneuver on God's part, and Satan never saw it coming. If they had understood God's wisdom, if they had grasped what God was doing at the cross, if they had understood God's strategy, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. The devil is no fool, but he is no match for God. And the cross is conclusive proof of that fact. And I think that should encourage us greatly, uh, even in the present crisis that we're in. Because, you know, Satan seems to be having a, a heyday right now with all of the havoc that he's causing, the death, the destruction, the fear, the panic, the isolation, the loneliness, the anxiety, the depression. Satan thinks he's winning a huge victory right now through this pandemic. But can you imagine his surprise? Can you imagine his disappointment when God, out of all of this suffering, brings about a worldwide spiritual awakening? That's what I'm praying will happen. And I know there are Christians all over the globe praying for the same thing. That in this season of suffering, believers will cry out to God like never before. That churches whose love for the Lord has grown cold will come alive again and be set on fire by the Holy Spirit. That millions upon millions of unbelievers will in desperation turn to Jesus and be swept into the kingdom of God. That's what I'm praying for. But whether that happens or not, we do know for certain that God will bring good out of this evil because he always does. Paul reminds us in Romans 8, 28, we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. All things, including the coronavirus. God will use Satan's work against Satan. And ultimately, Satan will be destroyed. Because 2,000 years ago, in the most brilliant, unexpected victory that has ever been achieved, Jesus defeated Satan by dying on a cross. Let's celebrate that victory together right now as we share in the blood and the body of Christ through communion together. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, Is not the cup of blessing which we bless a sharing in the blood of Christ? Is not the bread which we break a sharing in the body of Christ? Since there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. We may be separated from one another right now, but we are all one body still. Our unity is in the one Lord whom we remember together as we partake of his body and his blood. Let's pray. Father, we praise you for your wisdom demonstrated in the cross. We thank you for the victory that you gained over Satan through Jesus' death and resurrection. And we thank you that we can participate with Christ in that victory. We bless this bread in his powerful name. Amen.
Pray with me now for the cup. Father, we are forever grateful for the precious blood that Jesus freely poured out for us on the cross. We praise you that because of his victory over Satan, we can be forgiven and reconciled to you. In the name of Jesus, we bless this cup. Amen. As always, please let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you. Uh, if there's any specific prayer request that you'd like for us to be praying for. And uh, may God bless you in the coming week as you continue to reflect upon and rejoice in Jesus' marvelous victory at the cross.